Bobby Hemmings to come back to Cleveland to talk to us. And he's here tonight for reception to talk to the community. And any questions that you might have for him, please feel free to talk to him. He's just going to give a brief discussion about what the meat of his discussion will be tomorrow. Let's um, welcome him. Yeah. Bobby Hemmings. Get some energy up in here, which is good because um, uh, this is a uh, plain old Maya woman from Jamaica, and apparently the spirits must like this stuff. So this is interesting because one sister Delbra that I'm working with now on my um, tape thing, she put uh, some Bacardi up in her spirit room, and um, she put two whole bottles of Bacardi up in there, the brown and the white or whatever, and they stayed almost four months. You put this stuff down and, I mean, in two days, they're drinking it up. Two, three days, I mean, they really love this stuff and all. And I guess because it's made by black people in Jamaica, although you probably, the, the, the farm is, you know, run by white people because it's world famous. But as far, far as it's made by black people in Jamaica, but it's made the same way it was made uh, since um, 1800, 1879. So apparently the spirits love this stuff and so... I would recommend getting this type of stuff here too. And you know, I'm gonna spit it four ways. So what you do is you can either spit it in four corners or you can spit it in four ways. Uh, we'll do a little of that. <laughs> or you can spit it in four corners. Now, I've been spitting this stuff. This is some strong dark room. <laughs> I've been spitting this stuff all summer. <laughs> And mess around in the gut and all on a quiet taste. <laughs> <laughs> but I mess around and I could spit it all summer. And then at the end of September, boy, I was, I was up in the house and I was drinking some liquor or some shit. And I was like, excuse the expression, but I said, this ain't doing it. And I drank this thing here and I believe I was on a whole other round. <laughs> I took me two shots of this and I was, I believe I was on Syria somewhere. But anyway, uh, there was some sisters in Detroit, they like, it was like seven day adventures for all their life. And then if I, I think the spirit hit them and they decided they wanted to get into some consciousness. So they had some kind of way in the church that they test things that was wrong or bad for you. And this thing passed the test. Uh, apparently passed the test and all. So uh, uh, we know down in Haiti there's a reason why they spit the wrong, but then again on the other hand, we know that all the distilled stuff up here has got to be dropping. Who knows what they're giving to the people. So if you're gonna if you're gonna dabble in the spirits, because the word because liquor means the, the Latin word means is espiritus or espiritus. So or spiritus. So if you're gonna dabble in something, get you some real deal stuff from it's made by black people in the islands or whatever and stuff. You see what I'm saying? And um, apparently it, 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 it must be good because all of the spirits love hell out of this stuff here. So um, so uh, after taking a couple of sips of this. Uh, after taking a couple of sips of this, you know, that's all I can sip on <laughs> whenever, but that's, uh, uh, that's if you dabble in that. Um, I was saying it's interesting, I said, because if I would have known about this when I was 20, I'd probably been an alcoholic by now, but thank God. But anyway, <laughs> what we're going to do, uh, we're going to uh, recap some things we'll be talking about tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be dealing with, which is very special here in Cleveland, since we know that this is probably the Moorish capital of America, when we talk about the whole, the whole film bay and the whole, uh, the whole aspect of the whole Moorish no Ali uh, phenomena, uh, we know that here in Cleveland is probably the capital, and Ohio is probably the capital of those particular teachings being preserved, and that is for a reason. And it's also a reason that we understand that it didn't flourish as big as the so-called nation of Islam. You know what I'm saying? International, because also we know now that what we have now is things that have become mass movements are becoming saturated. And they even did a study, the Jung Foundation did a study, a book called The Little Narcissism, edited by Gene Siegel. They did a study on, when they broke down things, they said, well, what would be evil in this society if you break down things uh, from the ancient world <laughs> in the modern world, what would be one of the main evil forces? And they, and, and the whole society came to the conclusion that it was organized groups. Because something about organized groups, after so many 
remembers always something goes wrong. You know, the goals and the objectives at first is great, but then all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying, you've got too many Indians and no Indian chiefs, or too many Indian chiefs and no Indians. So I'll, something about the organized groups always goes astray. And which I would actually agree. If they talk about what is this modern evil, then it would be organized groups because that's what you have fighting. Mm -hmm. Now there's an occult war that is going on all over the country, which is very key. Mm -hmm. The guy wrote a book called The Zealotar, Mark Hetzel. Mark Hetzel, it's a book that came out in this initiated book, this book on him. And he died in 97. So there's another guy came in and took his biographical notes and put almost a hundred pages of notes in the back of this guy's book called The Zealotar. Which was interesting about the guy because I noticed in the bibliography, he didn't put a bibliography, but the bibliography is, uh, is in, introduced into the index. And I was noticing something, he used Gerald Massey. Now that is, you become persona non grata by using Gerald Massey. Only black people use Gerald Massey, but white people can become persona non grata for using it. They have this thing in this country which is a way that they ban books. And simply banning book is not putting those books in your bibliography on the collegiate realm. Or any other realm that you have, if you just exclude things from the bibliography, then it doesn't exist. You see. So Gerald Massey is persona non grata for all of the European scholarship. So anytime you see a white boy doing it all, you know he's trying to set the record straight and save face. So this guy died in 1997. And I, was in, and I was up in New York, and um, I, I picked up the book, I put it down, came back the next day and some place, picked up the book again, looked in it, put it down. Went to New, went, came back to Atlanta, went to Waters Bookstore, picked up the book again, put it down. And the next day I found a brand new book in a used bookstore, and I said, wait a minute, the spirit must be want me to get this book. And anyway, I got the book, and I just start seeing these terminologies that I only see in black books, and mainly only see used by Gerald Massey. So I said, wait a minute, this white boy is on this something. So when I started reading the biographical notes of the guy that came in and had to put this guy's book back together, he actually had to come in after the guy died and he had to actually, because the, the, the first part of the book was like an initiation. The second part of the book is a real scholarly adaptation, but it has Sorry. almost 100 pages of notes. Um, uh, 100 pages of notes. It's um, just, it, 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 it kind of reminds me of that book, Melatonin, Melatonin, your um, body's own, I, I think I introduced it the last time. Melatonin, your body's, uh, the body's own wonder drug, melatonin. But in the back, you have almost 30 or 40 pages of bibliography, and, it, and we're talking about the most advanced research in the country is done on melatonin. I'm just talking about this literally thousands of agencies converging at one time to do this thing on melatonin. So in the back of this particular book, um, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit on something soon. And in the book, the guy has a footnote saying that this guy, Mark, I think his name was something over something. I think the other guy was Mark Hed, um, Hetzel. Is the, guy that, that, the name of the book is called The Zealotor. And in the back of the book, the guy simply said, look, if we want to survive, we're going to have to connect with some type of black Masonic organization. So they might not necessarily talk about no Prince Hall, because, you know, that's a goddamn joke. That ain't nothing but a social club and hit the Prince Hall up and he, you know that. Now let's not front with this shit. It has nothing to do with business whatsoever. They grabbed my granddaddy off the street and took him through all the degrees in one Saturday morning. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we know that that's a great organization based on our historical thing, but we know that it ain't got nothing to do with no knowledge. You understand what I'm saying? I don't care how much we front the signs and symbols and shit, that ain't no advanced esoteric teachings. We know that. And we ought not be funny with this mess. And I, cause I'm a man, Prince Hall, standing on the square. I'm a, in Dr. Ben's Masonic thing and all that. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know, and all of that stuff, we know that's nothing. You know, to be funny. My brother's Mason of the Year for five years. He tell me, I don't know jack shit. <laughs> and this nigga Shriner, most celebrated Mason, young Mason inside. And he's a year older than me. And homeboy was Mason of the Year for five years. He tell you right now, me don't know nothing. So he got into the consciousness along the same time I did. But the point is, is what the, this guy was saying, that we were going to make it, we are going to have to link with some type of black Masonic organization. They didn't know that the Prince 
Paul didn't know anything, but they were saying, well, it's not even that, because the guy did mention Prince Hall, but he remembered the original Prince Hall, which was set up on a whole other level. But that Prince Hall, I mean, Prince Hall in the beginning was looking for this type of thing. It might have gone down to some foolishness before, but Prince Hall, just like the Richard Allen thing, Richard Allen and A.M.E. Chuck, those were revolutionaries. You think about Richard Allen, you got the African Episcopal Methodist Church. You think about that. When, when was that? 1785. 1785. You look at the concept of that in 1785. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about years before slavery was over. When you think of the concept, that was just as revolutionary as uh, uh, all African people, revolutionary party, the Black Panthers, or whatever you want to call it. When you look at the time frame, you understand what I'm saying? And so uh, the whole Prince Hall thing was on that particular level as far as, as, far as the forecast. You see what I'm saying? Now we're even finding out now that one brother has even done some deeper studies into Alpha Phi Alpha and all of uh, the... Now, now we know that they wanted it to go as far as the Boule, they wanted it to go as far as these particular elite groups of people, you see what I'm saying, as a thought system, and it later on turned into that. But the original jewels of Alpha Phi Alpha, they was dealing with all the whole comedic stuff and all that, and that's what they said. Leo Hansberry was an Alpha, uh, uh, Alpha Phi Alpha, and actually they called him Little Egypt at Darwin Harvard, or Little Harvard at Yale. So we understand that in its inception, these things that the black people who first started a meeting wanted it to do something else. And it always, the government comes in and helps. Because they weren't even scared. Like take for instance, it's 75 degrees right now. And it's only a few days from November. You don't find that shit strange? I don't care where you are. You know what I'm saying? You don't find that strange that I get on a dog on plane and the only thing I gotta take is a sweater? You know what I mean? It's a little cool tonight, but this is still strange. And they know what time it is. You see what I'm saying? So therefore, they are looking for somebody to save them. Uh, to save them. So we're going to deal with... We're going to deal with... What we're going to deal with on this particular part is we're going to deal with the esoteric things that the Moors introduced into Spain. We know that the whole Moor thing goes back millions of years, but we're talking about this esoteric... And all this stuff is the stuff that they preserved. You see what I'm saying? So there we take the instance, like the whole Halloween thing, the Halloween. Mm -hmm. That's a Moorish holiday. You see what I'm saying? That's a Moorish holiday. The whole Halloween. Halloween is a journey into the underworld. The underworld that you're thinking is hell or some ghouls and goblins, if you break it down there so carefully, this means the deepest part of your subconscious mind. And everything is based on your subconscious mind. You see what I'm saying? What you call life is only a reflection of the subconscious aspect. So the subconscious mind is everything. That's called the amenta. You see what I'm saying? We never go to those particular parts and bring it back down to the deepest part of the psyche or the body. You see what I'm saying? We think it's some mystical place, but it's not necessarily that. So your whole Halloween, what you call Halloween, was introduced by the Lord. You see what I'm saying? You know, it's talking about the whole underworld. And what does it mean? It means you have the whole summer months. And you have all of this particular energy, Sirius rising. Then in the fall equinox, you have what is called the great harvest of these energies. And then you have it going into the underworld, and you have this ongoing cycle. You see what I'm saying? This ongoing cycle. Your whole Thanksgiving, you think it is the turkey and all that shit. They have ghost holidays. What it is, they'll give you the ghost thing which is some foolishness about some pure ones. But if you go to the Dead Sea Scrolls, just about every ancient text has a Thanksgiving. Every, every ancient text has some type of Thanksgiving ritual. So apparently this is some type of conjunction at that particular time. So what it is, these secret societies Based on what the Moors have brought in, it's still doing the same pattern of some type of ritualistic worship that was taught to them in the 16 universities in Spain, and in Europe. So is it something we should be doing? Well, see, we get into that. And so what they'll do is they'll give you the foolishness, the turkey, the pumpkin, the whole thing with the Christian Jesus Christ thing. Meanwhile, there's a great esoteric junctions of it up under. And they're going and doing some stuff based on the
spring equinox, fall equinox, winter solstice, summer solstice. Mm -hmm. And in so many words, you cultivate energy. And we'll get into another part. One part about this is, and we'll, we'll deal with this also too and all, um, there's one applied art that we that, that, that most organizations don't know. There's one applied art as far as the way of action to get you the most energy, and that is sexual energy. We'll, go, we'll, we'll deal with that in a few minutes. Um, but anyway, what you have here is you have a, what you have here is you have these particular uh, energy frequencies. Frank, Frank, you cannot fall, you cannot summer social, winter social. All this stuff was taught to them by the Moors, and they still have this stuff preserved and still going on, but yet they give you the foolishness. You see what I'm saying? Blue moon, new moon, full moon. I mean, it's just tons of this particular stuff. In so many words, they're dealing with it on the so whole cup level. And um, what they call it is they just call it new age. And all of this stuff is out of the room. Those little, the little rocks they throw, the rooms. That's all coming out of Ke uh, coming out of Kemet, um, and brought up in there, brought up into, into Europe by the Moors. So your whole uh, your whole room thing. Um, I mean, we just talk about various of disciplines. Your tarot. Um, <coughs> just about um, and one great thing is this whole Grail mythology. You talk, they talk about the whole Grail and the King Arthur's court and all that stuff. We'll get deeper into that particular one. King Arthur's court is supposed to be a court of a new Egypt. The word Camelot means Cam, black. It means black lot. Black, and it means new place somewhere in the future of an extremity, they call it, or, or an appendix, or an annex of the original people supplanting in a new world. So in so many words, they talk about this in the Hermetic text, where there will be a group of Egyptians that will be extrapolated and put into a new land. And those ones will bring back the kingdom. So they came in and they took the Camelot mythology and took the Camelot mythology. It came, it, it came to Spain, it came to France, it came to Ireland. When Britain conquered Ireland, they took the mythology and started calling their damn self Camelot and King Arthur. And it was more science all the people in the West. The word Osiris means West. Osiris, in, in the West. So they were talking about a new group of people, a very remote and ancient people. That would be a sick people, that's called a Fisher King, a wounded person psychologically, a very sick people. So sick that they need cosmic influence to save their ass, because there ain't nothing going to happen down here, but some divine influence. Now you know damn well they can't be talking about us. <laughs> this is the mythology of the whole Fisher King, the Hurt King. But fish, Christ, Pisces, Christ, fish, the Fisher King, ancient race of people. You have in Samaria, you have an honest, this fish person. Fish man, have, you know. Uh, they show pictures of him in the serious mystery book, an honest, but have the scaly fish. And all uh, that's talking about that same mom. Um, um, that same fish thing. You want to sit down, sister? Any brothers got some seats? We got a sister sitting up here, so you can only ask the seats if you, if you a hard head. <laughs> you know, and let the sister sit down. You know, we much rather look at you. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so this whole Camelot thing was talking about us. Britain took the dog and store when they conquered Scotland, Ireland and vestiges of, of, of France because they had these wars for a hundred years with France. And they took this particular story and now they're camping and now they are masquerading as royalty all based on this whole Camelot thing. And even went to God to put Kennedy and that called that the whole Camelot shit. So well, we'll give you a little stuff. But they're, they're, they're perpetrating the fraud and the royalty is us. That's why Diana got taken out because she didn't name the child King Arthur. He was, they wanted him to be named Arthur, and she named him Philip. You see what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's the way it is. Um, let me get one other thing here that uh, is very important to document this. 
Now they talk about this in the Hermetic text 5,000 years ago. They talk about this new Kemet. But it's interesting, in 1939, there's a brother with the University of Chicago, because because we are spiritual people, when you hold it down, the shit comes up in our DNA. But every now and then it just is because we are the gods, the great old ones. So in 1931, a guy by the name of Theodore P. P, Theodore P. Randolph, I think his name. Uh, I got it. I, I got it in my other bag. I'll announce the name. Went to the University of Chicago and did, did studies. And he did studies on papyrus and different things, and he made, he, and he made a startling evidence. The startling evidence that he come up, came up upon was this. That in, after the Arabs invaded Egypt, about a couple of years before Muhammad's death, you had large droves of Egyptians, of Camites, that fled to the West Africa. Now, you had, now, spread to West Africa. You got your Dogon out of that stuff. You got all kind of remnants of Maasai. You got all kind of remnants of Warlock that, that Dion talked about. Uh, you know, in Senegal. Fled to West Africa. Meanwhile, seeing shifts to the slave trade, or the time when there, the whole slave phenomenon and the white man coming in trying to deal with the slave thing. Now, it's key. The African are faced with a problem. Number one, the chiefs or the kings have to protect the people in their particular nation. That's the ones that they are obligated to protect from going into slavery. So they make deals. Meanwhile, you got some homeless niggas over here from Kibbit, because Kibbit was taken over by the Arabs. So give up the damn scrubs. <laughs> so all of them, so you have a lot of them saying, well, because, you know, because based on if you don't have a nation, if you some scrubs, these are very advanced, but they said these people were very sophisticated, and there was a jealousy. Now, you might think that's a bullshit, but i tell you what happened. The goddamn government came in and they confiscated every fucking book. Every book. But a few black people in Chicago from 1939 got a, hold of, got a hold of one or two of these books. So we might think it's crazy, but the government didn't think it was crazy. The government went to war on a man and his book, and they got every last book. And it was interesting, I didn't even find out about the book until 1999, and when the brother handed me a Xerox copy of the book, it was almost like it was printed off the press in 1939. The Spirit preserved that for that type of information. And the Xerox copy was as perfectly preserved as it was printed off the press in 1939. And so these people were very sophisticated. You know, they were very advanced. And there was a lot of jealousy going on. So it was a whole, it was a whole entire movement to get rid of the scrubs, the homeless people, because you're not obligated to take care of them because they don't have no nation. Their nation was destroyed. By the Arabs, the last vestige of that, they probably had several invasions where they migrated over throughout the times of the Persians and the whole nine yards. But the key here is, they got rid of that, and so what Theodore wrote, I got Theodore picked Queen Rudolph, I got it. No, 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 this is, man, this man, 1939, man. Oh, 1939, tell people, Uh, Theodore, I can't think of his name right now, but anyway, I have it tomorrow, because I have the book. I think it's Theodore P. Randolph, but I'll tell you. Um, anyway, I, I, I'll tell you tomorrow. Anyway, um, what he's saying, that, and this is what the great find is, a great stock of Africans that came over, that became slaves through Gory Island were Egyptians, Canaanites. Because there's a whole argument in the whole Afrocentric movement saying, well, why y'all get into the Egyptian things? You all are West Africans. And what he's saying, that's not necessarily true. And he did a study, and, he, and, and, and the pictures that they took of the black women in Chicago in 1939, they were almost identical to the statues at the University of Chicago and in Cairo and in the, and, and the British Museum. It was almost a, a, a perfect likeness when he did his particular thesis and his work and the pictures he showed, he proved that they were Egyptians, or Camites. This goes all the way back to this, the, but, but the actual documents from the Hermetic text say there will be a group of Egyptians 
say, I'm a living example. My name is Hemet. A word is changed that way. Hemet is my name, and, and, and Hemet is my name from birth. I didn't put that out when I became, became conscious, and I traced it all the way back. All the way back to Kemet. From Kemet, Morocco, Moors. When the Moors were expelled, somehow we got hooked up with some French and became some French slaves. And came to Spain and ended up in Oklahoma, where they found a Stella in Oklahoma of Akhenaten's teaching before they even excavated his tomb. So the family lineage, I traced it all the way back to Kemet. So I'm trying to say is we got proof of that right now. So the point here is, uh, this whole notion that we're not Egyptians is full. You see what I'm saying? And this bears witness to what is this Camelot thing and who are these people that are supposed to rise up? So this is the basis of, some, of, of, of the Moorish teachings. You see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, that we'll, we'll be dealing with also too. Let's go into a question and answer. And let's go into a question and answer for our, you know, um, what's that? Why, why are they trying to get us to save them? How are they going to get this is just their notion. Uh, they, well, it's simple. We the people. I mean, but I mean, we the people. They understand that number one, and the Gnostic text says that the later day beings cannot have salvation because they are not capable of it. So what are they talking about? They're not talking about moralism. They're talking about an alchemical process of DNA, genetic, and in so many words, melanated, melanin. Now, the Kabbalistic text, they got the greatest scholar of Kabbalah, Gershwin and Schroeder, big time on, on, on Jew from Tel Aviv, died in 1992, 1982, big time. And he says, what, what, what is all potential in God unfolds in man. Whereas God is all his potential, Man is the perfecting agent. You see what I'm saying? What, what exists seemingly in God unfolds and manifests in man. But uh, he said that it's done by one Neoplatonic formula. And I talked about that before. One Neoplatonic formula. Well, if you don't know what Neoplatonism is, Platonism is a form, is, 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 is a form, is, Platonism is a new name for Hermeticism. For more students, yeah. I'd like to know about the 500 Oh, 80 years, 508 years as an added, that the European added to the calendar. Um, my research on the calendar that I can see is, but um, because there's, there's so much discrepancy on this calendar thing. My research is that the majority of the ancient calendars ran out about 1990. 91, 94, no later than like 96 or 98. Even when you talk about the, the Chinese calendar, which would be closer to an indigenous calendar, they're already in what, 2003 or four or something like that. You see what I'm saying? But um, in so many words, in so many words, if you're not talking about really this chronology, because that time gets real messed up. The greatest event that, that the Africans talk about was that Dogon City ceremony because it was a great conjunction period, and it's talked about in the book, um, the book that they banned. Now, they banned that book for years, until I found it in 93, Celestial Ship of the North, by uh, Evil Mincy of Strength. And in that book, uh, on, on the, I think page 17 or something, they talked about, Africa will not have a, earthly, a, a change of an earthly condition until there's a great conjunction of Mars and Saturn in Africa by Africa. Well, the great conjunction of Mars and Saturn was the city ceremony of the Dogon, April 23rd, 1993. And lo and behold, 1994, and lo and behold, the same damn day that they had the conjunction on the, the Dogon, a city ceremony had that conjunction. And that great city dance, they had the free nigga in Atlanta on the same damn day. So they had niggas in the Dogon. Africa getting down, they had the young people over here getting down the same damn time. <laughs> 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 and it fucked them up. And the next year, Vernon Jordan came out and said, we must stop freezing way out in California. And the freezing is in Atlanta. I don't know why the hell you going to be talking to a bully meeting, talking about stopping freezing in California. Because you know, under the head for Bill Clinton and the Scully Bones. And it fucked them up so bad that they couldn't take it. They said, oh, man. What are the odds of the Dogon doing the singing ceremony? And what are the odds of this Freaknik? And it was before the Freaknik got, it was before it really got crazy. It was just college students, but it had gotten dead. Now 
national. This freak nick was going on the same day and scared the shit out of them. What is it? What is that supposed to mean? It's a spiritual thing. How is it these people, these, these Africans saying that they're supposed to do two dances? Okay. They have the birthday of Osiris and Jimmy, which represents a 100 and 120 years. Okay. And there's two 60 year periods of Dogon and two cities ceremonies in, in West Africa represents one hippie period in East in, in, in Kemet. And the, the one hippie period in Kemet is 120 years. Represents two city ceremonies of 60 years in Dogon. They said after they did the second city ceremony, because the other one was 1930 something. After they did the second city ceremony, it was all over. Well, lo and behold, the same time they were doing the second one, they were going in down Atlanta. Doing the same one. Think about it. It's spiritual. I want you to process here. Think about it. Think of how the government is thinking. And thinking how these, these people coming together for a spiritual dance to line up some shit, a conjunction in the universe. To line up a ritualistic thing to line up Saturn and Jupiter. Jupiter is called a light planet. Saturn is called a black planet. That's that yin and yang thing. Polarity coming together. Also coming together in us, a light particle with the black substance, which is melanin. But do you know that the American Indians were doing something very similar? Well, well, no, no, yeah, the American Indians were what still fucking up because the white buffalo was born in September of the same year. And the two shoemaker leaving nine, this thing crashed into Jupiter in 1994. Plus, the Matrix book said that they had these white scientists to sit around tables uh, around all these people. They did all this remote viewing and all these calculations. And based on them, all of that talent was wearing out in 1994, including Elizabeth Clare Prophet. She might be crazy about her, but she got a whole bunch of people working for her. Yeah. And Elizabeth Clare Prophet book, The Apocalypse, the, the Astrology of the Four Horsemen, her book runs out in 1994. And the OJ shit starts on Juneteenth, almost 1994. Juneteenth to June 19th. Uh, I think the great chase scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Started around the same time. All that stuff was all fitting in because you know the government threw that together. But the point I'm trying to make here is, as far as the calendar and stuff you talk about, the government said, well, what's gonna happen? They said, well, it's all over. They said, well, hell, we still here. They call that a null period, which is like a leftover residue. Yeah. And why you're traveling? You need to be taking the place. Yeah. It dawns on you. Yeah. And when you come back here, right. But see, that's the reason why this is a penal colony. Okay. Remember I talked about the, the, the Brightman Watch? I talked about that the last time? Yeah. About the Brightman Watch? Right. Where they got this thing, you pull it out, and when you pull this thing, it's a home. And, there's a watch where you, wherever you are on the planet, if you go down on an airplane or a boat, boat you pull this button out and it will come get you. But the, the, the watch is sold everywhere except the United States. <laughs> why? Because the United States is a penal colony. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and they separated, and so therefore, it's a prison. You can't have no damn home in the life coming and locate some motherfuckers in prison. The bus come out. This shit ain't happening. So you can't buy a bright and watch, but it's the same watch that when in the movie The Skulls, when they went over, they got a bright and watch. You see what I'm saying? They got a bright and watch and stuff. It's like the elite shit. It's like, everybody know about the Rolex and shit, because the rappers talk about that, but the highest shit is the bright. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You go to New York to get an imitation mark off for 100. A 50. And people be glad you white boys be buying that shit up because they know the $50 watch is going to cost 5000 You see, it's going to cost 5000 and all, you know. But the key here is the reason why they couldn't, they didn't want to sell the one here, you can't buy it in America. And if you pull the button, if you go to counter and buy it and pull the button here, your ass goes to jail. Because you're trying to break out of prison. <laughs> so this is a whole penal cost. What's that? No, no, you talking about all the catastrophes, no. I, I, I really, I'm so busy on telling my how they live in the news, but I like this from national news. So I'm telling the other day I'm watching Dan Rather, and he says, uh, unbeknownst to the calculations of the scientists, they had made error in the calculation that by the year 2010, it, the average temperature of the Earth will increase about 10 degrees. I said, do they know what they just said? Do they know what 10 degrees means? You know what I mean. Ocean, anemia, ozone layer, 
cancer. Oh, I know it's hard as hell now. Don't be serious. Come on, Ken. We talking about the fried chicken. One degree? Oh, yeah. We don't think about that. That's what you believe in. Look at this. What's that about?